Hello there. Our virtue signalling political classes are quite happy to throw their weight behind supporting irregular English Channel arrivals, but they completely ignore these poor suffering people. Those who have suffered or lost loved ones directly due to the repercussions of rolling their sleeves up at the appointed time are being completely ignored by the establishment, our politicians and the press. And to add insult to injury, even discussing this issue on social media such as this platform can get the beady eye of the censors on you. This has to stop. There is enough evidence out there about this to sink a battleship, and the harder these anti-truthers try to hide the obvious, the bigger the backlash is going to be. And one of those affected is the widower of BBC Radio Newcastle presenter Lisa Shaw. She died as a result of complications after taking it, but her husband... Gareth Eve says he was given the political runaround for two years and he says he's now been forced to take legal action against the big pharma company involved, Alpha Zulu. No one has reached out or engaged with us at all, he said. And it's reported that his lawyers have sent the company pre-action protocol letters for 75 people. Mr Eve also said that this isn't about being anti-anything, but about those who lost loved ones and have been made to feel like it's a dirty secret. Dirty secret just about sums it up. It's extremely filthy and the powers that be want it kept a secret and ensure no one rocks the money-making boat. And all bar a small handful of MPs, the rest of them are far more interested in keeping their careers safe than keeping their people safe or helping them. This should really be a wake-up call for the voters to see how readily their politicians will drop those with difficulties into the mire. Far easier to fill up hotels with newcomers. As long as it's in someone else's parish, of course. Yes, they want them here, but not here where they are. Bad for re-election chances, obviously. But as to those who have suffered because they followed the science, the establishment wants them ignored and forgotten. Now the impending global financial crunch. The IMF is warning that the global economy is in a perilous phase and that rising interest rates could be the trigger to set off a banking crisis storm leading to a worldwide recession. And they say there's a one in seven chance of it happening with the economic counsellor to the IMF, Pierre-Olivier Gourinchas, saying... In such a severe downside scenario, global GDP per capita could come close to falling, an outcome whose probability we estimate at about 15%, or about 1 in 7. So it sounds like the banks are shaky getting shakier, and that the only way to save the masters of the universe is to get the taxpayer to underwrite it all again just like last time. More borrowing, more quantitative easing and more low interest rates to keep the financiers in clover. And keep the housing market stable-ish and highly priced so as to keep the banks solvent. Either that or the worldwide use of central bank digital currencies coupled with carbon and social credits that will be rolled out as the answer. Together with the 15-minute cities, of course while the rich and powerful grab everything they can lay their filthy paws on. Now, I've no problem with properly acquired wealth, but the recent pandemic has shown the tip of a dark underbelly iceberg out there. And it's that corruption that needs addressing. But the Tories don't seem to be too happy to get that ball really rolling. Now, how's this for wishful thinking? We now read that Rishi Sunak has a Baldrick-style cunning plan. 
Yes, a plan so cunning that if it was a garden accessory, it would be a large heated swimming pool that required the national grid to be adapted to keep it at the correct temperature, with a very large neon sign above it saying, This is a cunning plan. But what is that plan? Well, it appears to be to cause the opposition to self-destruct with belly laughs before the next election takes place. As the Express explains, Rishi Sunak is reportedly planning a general election in autumn 2024, as he believes a later vote brings the best chance of a shock victory. The only shock we'll see is if the Tories are still able to command sufficient votes to be the main opposition party, and they call him Savvy Sunak. Let's see what the support base looks like once he's taxed his own Tory voters into penury and frittered away all their money. But Rishi Sunak is grinding away at the Labour lead in the polls, and Labour has its own Baldrick-style cunning plan, that of rolling around in the political gutter while slinging gobs of mud at the Tories, especially Rishi Sunak. Now that'll keep the faithful happy, or maybe some of them, but the rest of us might be appalled at the strategy while being mildly amused by the content. Not that the Tories have been any better. Do you remember the Blair Demon eyes? Anyway, maybe the Tories should be doing something like this, if they want to roll around in the political gutter with Starmer, that is. A leaflet with, Do you think our political leaders should embrace ethics and morals and not sink to low gutter-style politics? Keir Starmer doesn't. You get the idea. Now here's a salutary lesson in overtaxing people. The Norwegian centre-left government decided to tax the wealthy a bit more, but it seems a tipping point was reached, because 50 billionaires and millionaires have exited the country since 2009 to take up residence in Switzerland. And they took a net worth of 3 billion quid with them, says The Telegraph. And there are fears that more will now follow because of another recent tax rise. While in the UK, the Prime Minister-in-waiting Keir Starmer is mulling over the options of how to use the tax vice to squeeze as much juice from the wealthy as he can get away with. Now, when talking to those on the left, especially the far left, they are always very keen on wealth taxes – they are aching to smash the rich and share out all their ill-gotten gains to all and sundry. But when people say you'll drive the rich and their wealth abroad and get no tax from them, they reply, good riddance, we'll find someone else to grow that wealth and then tax them heavily. Communists never seem to grasp that slaving away to build wealth to then have it ripped from your grasp and doled out to all comers is not an incentive to be entrepreneurial. It's an incentive to be lower than mediocre and involve oneself in corruption. And here's a lost opportunity. Instead of going to Switzerland, those rich Norwegians could have been incentivized to bring their dosh to the UK. But why would they, when we've already got Labour light in power and heavy Labour is about to take over? Now Richard has published a new video over on Missed the News, our backup channel, so please go and take a look. And please also do sign up to it. Thank you.